Romantic poetry places nature as a central theme, although the interpretation of love for nature varies among poets. Wordsworth, particularly in his renowned poem Lines composed few miles above Tintern Abbey, presents three distinct stages in his love affair with nature. The common thread among romantics is their deep and unmistakable affinity for nature, regardless of the nuances in their individual perspectives. The term nature carries diverse meanings for the romantics. It is frequently depicted as an artistic creation, shaped by a divine imagination, expressed through illustrative language. While specific viewpoints on nature differed significantly, ranging from nature as a healing force for humans, a source of subject and imagery, a refuge from the artificial constructs of civilization in the materialistic world, to even an artificial language, the prevalent consensus was that nature held the status of a harmoniously interconnected entity. In the Romantic era, nature was perceived as organic, in stark contrast to the scientific or rationalist viewpoint that considered it a system governed by mechanical laws. Romanticism displaced the rationalist idea of the universe as a mere machine with the concept of an organic image, resembling a living tree or humanity itself. Moreover, romantics emphasized the accurate description of natural phenomena with clarity, focusing on capturing sensuous gradation. This dedication to precise observation is evident not only in romantic landscape painting, but also in their poetic imagination of nature. It is crucial to note that the pursuit of accuracy and correctness in observation was not an end in itself. Instead, romantic nature poetry primarily functions as a medium for meditation and poetical imagination. In Wordsworth's body of work, nature serves as the paramount positive influence on the human mind. Every aspect of the natural world, ranging from towering mountains to the most unassuming flower, evokes noble and elevated thoughts, stirring passionate emotions in those who contemplate such manifestations. Wordsworth consistently underscores the significance of nature in shaping an individual's intellectual and spiritual growth. Cultivating a harmonious relationship with nature facilitates a connection to both the spiritual and societal realms. According to Wordsworth, as articulated in the prelude, an appreciation for nature can pave the way for a genuine affection towards humanity. In certain poems like The World is Too Much With Us from 1807 and London, 1802 from 1807, Wordsworth contends that people tend to become self-centered and morally compromised when they distance themselves from nature by dwelling in urban environments. The inherent compassion and nobility of the human spirit become tainted by artificial social conventions and the squalor of city life. In contrast, individuals who spend significant time in nature, such as laborious and farmers, manage to preserve the purity and nobility of their souls. Unlike Wordsworth, Coleridge incorporates theoretical ideas into his poetry, diverging from the notion of catering to the common man and opting for elevated language, poetic diction, and specialized subject matter. While maintaining reverence for nature in Romantic literature, Coleridge's poems extend beyond the natural world. He values primary imagination as the crucial poetic element, distinguishing it from secondary imagination or fancy. Kubler Khan serves as a distinct example of Coleridge's use of primary imagination, vividly describing Xanadu and the sacred river Alf. Coleridge's primary focus in romantic poetry centers on imagination as the essential key, 
divided into primary and secondary components. In Biographia Literaria, he defines primary imagination as the vital force behind human perception, reflecting the eternal act of creation. Secondary imagination, while connected to the primary, involves the conscious will of the poet and operates on a different level. The exploration of poetical imagination's workings in the soul leads to a dichotomy between the mind and soul in human beings, emphasizing the romantic association of poetic imagination with the soul's intuitive and transcendental nature. The romantic concept establishes a connection between nature and imagination, transforming poetical imagination from perceptive to creative and poetic power. Coleridge's unifying power of imagination acts as a synthetic force reconciling opposites, providing intuitive and subjective knowledge, contributing to the higher quality of romantic verse. Wordsworth and Coleridge's visions of nature are explored through poetical imagination, tracing the evolution of its conceptualization and emphasizing its connection to the soul. Different modes of imagination, such as prosaic, pictorial, and poetic imagination, contribute to understanding the Romantic period's imaginative landscape. Poetic imagination, closely tied to creation and novelty in Romantic poetry, embodies the highest level of creativity and potentiality. It enables the awareness of new meanings or the revival of declining discourse. Coleridge's poetry, particularly Kubler Khan and Frost at Midnight, analyses poetical imagination, emphasizing nature's transformative power and its capacity to teach joy, love, and spirituality.